Hey guys, so we're searching through the interwebs for this LLVM compiler infrastructure thing and I stumbled across this article about my first language frontend with LLVM tutorial. And as it seems, this is a tutorial on how to make your own custom programming language. And I thought to myself, you should do that. So before we start talking about making your own programming language, we should talk about LLVM itself. So as far as I understand it, LLVM is an uh, infrastructure or framework that allows compilers and linkers, etc. to use a framework that uh, generates and analyzes machine code as well as virtual machine code. LLVM implements a custom own bytecode or bitcode like c -sharp and Java do, but that one is called LLVM IR, called bitcode, and that can be compiled then to all sorts of real machine code like for x64 system or arm system or whatever and we will use this tool or this framework to create our own small little programming language i just wanted to note that i'm not an expert and i have no clue about that i just stumbled across this and i want to learn more about it that's why we do this here okay so if there is some information wrong, just take don't my word for real. We will learn together. So the guide starts with introducing us to the language we're going to create, which is called Kaleidoscope, which allows us to create custom functions using if-else statements as well as for loops, and allows us to do mainly just arithmetic with just one data type, which is a double position floating point number, so basically a 64-bit floating point data type. For implementing this language, we first need to create a so-called lexer. Alexa is a software that takes a string input and chops it into multiple so-called tokens. A token consists of a token type and an optional token value. A token type identifies what the thing is we actually chopped now off from the string, like a bracket to identify the start of a parameter list, a number literal or an identifier. A identifier is a special token which usually is basically the name of something like a class, a function or a variable. The first thing we need to do is we need to visit your most favorite search engine and search for LLVM project. Then click on the first GitHub link. Then copy the clone link. After that, open up a console and navigate to an empty folder. Now use git clone and the clone link to clone the LLVM project. Next, check out the branch for the latest LLVM release and create a folder which can then contain the build cache. Then use CMake to actually create the build cache, to build the project and to install the project on your computer. Now that it is installed and hopefully also added to your system path, we can create your, uh, our own small little project. For that I will just uh, go into C line your project, executable, select the appropriate folder and then click on create. In here we then have created a small little main cpp file and a cmakelists.txt. First let's visit the cmakeslist.cpp. As you can see it's quite empty. We still need to add a little bit to add support for the LLVM dependencies. So for that after our cmakexx standard 14 we set the build architecture to um, 64. The reason for, uh, uh, for that is that we have built our LLVM in for 64 bit right now, and that's why we need to do that. I also say target 64 on. After that, we need to import LLVM first. So, LLVM also provi uh, already provides a couple of packages with uh, via CMake, which we can easily. Um, now add to our small little project because we have added LLVM to the system path we can easily search here. So we need to import the configuration and the include directories as well as the definition files. 
after we create our executable we also tell the linker to use our uh, to use a couple of LLVM components for that we first need to add uh, the components to lib names so we can then use them and now we need to add them to our target so that they get linked in and with that our CMake file is properly set up small little mistake here this obviously needs to be not my testing project's name it needs to be our proper target here now we can finally start implementing our lexer for this the tutorial starts with creating the enum that houses all the different token types the first token type is the end of file token the end of file token basically gets emitted when the lexer reaches the end of the file, obviously. We now also have a couple of commands. So this is for example the definition token. The definition token is used when we reach the definition keyword and definition keyword is for declaring that we now introduce a new function. Now we also have the uh, keyword extern which is used to declare an uh, external keyword uh, external function like a uh, print function or whatever that is exposed by the C code now we have some primary expressions like token identifier which is used for uh, as I already said to hold a name of a function class or whatever and there is the token number which is the number uh, signal for the number literal there is only one kind of literal in the kaleidoscope language is which is a double precision floating point number after that we also create a global storage for the token for the current past token these are the identifier string and the value of the number we do this because the uh, because the lexer will then read a token from the input stream and then sets this global state to that value and then every other co every other co parsing component can then read this global state and actually also go to the next token if needed so if we uh, pass a more complex thing then we just pass uh, then we can say okay take now three tokens and then we have all of those information after each other and this is in a global state where everything can control the currently parsed token so now we create the actual token parsing function which is called uh, get talk and which returns the integer this integer is either the value of this returning token uh, this token type or the value of the ascii character that it now tried to pass but was not able to uh, identify or to put to such a token like if we have brackets or whatever because right now we only have the end of file the def keyword the extern keyword a identifier and a number for that we create a static integer last character we need this uh, for context purposes because uh, when you then load other uh, when you then as already said switch the global state of the token by uh, so that uh, when any other function calls this get toke function again to get the next token the first thing we do in our parsing function is we skip all white spaces that can be uh, there so that we are uh, so that we don't care about white space like uh, so it's not like pa uh, python or whatever we do this by looping around uh, the uh, last character check if that one is a ch uh, if that one is a white character and if that's the case then we just simply read again one character from the default input stream after that we check if the first character is an alpha character so any kind of classical uh, latin uh, latin character And if that's the case, we now know, okay, it is an identifier. Because this is only the case if 
we have an identifier or a keyword. And after that we will read again any alphanumeric character till the end. Till we reach again white space or whatever. So in here we now set the identifier string to the last character and now read again from the input stream as long as the character is an alphanumeric character. And for every new red character we just simply append it to the identifier string. So that means we read the, into the identifier string until we reach a character that is not an alphanumeric character. After that we check if this identifier string is actually already a known keyword, like our def keyword. I noticed a small little bug. And when it is a uh, def keyword then we return that we pass the def keyword. Now we also do the same thing for the extern keyword. And if no keyword is matched with the identifier string, we return that we have read just a simple identifier. But what actually happens if it is not an alpha character? So if it's something else or a number character? For that we just check, okay, is the character, the last character, actually a digit? Or is the last character a dot? And if that's the case, we now know that this is actually a number literal. We now do pretty much the same as for the identifier string, but this time in a custom small little cache. The number string and what we do is we add to the number string the last character then we read the last uh, the new last character and then we check what the new value actually is we can't do it so simple as a bath because we now need to have two checks we need to check if it is still a digit or if it is a dot because, uh, because we have a floating point value and not just an integer. After that, we convert the, this newly constructed string to the actual double position floating point with strtod for string to double and we use uh, numstr.cstring zero and after that we just return that we have read a number literal after that we also want to handle now comments so we can do that by checking if the red character is actually a hashtag so now we know okay this is actually a comment nothing else and what we just simply need to do is we need to uh, read till the end of that comment. So that we again read all characters until the character is not end of file and the last character is not backslash n. And last but not least, the last character is not carrier return. So with that, comments end with end of file or with a line break. When we then have read such a comment, we check if the last character is actually end of file, uh, if it is not an end of file, and if it's not an end of file, then we just return the next token. With that we ensure that whatever happens, as long as we don't need to create an error or whatever, the get token will read a token. It even can be the end of file token, that doesn't care, but it will definitely read at least one token and set the global state to it, no matter what. Because a comment is not a token. So that's why we need to call get token so that we can ensure that we actually read the next token.
what we now do is we check if the last character so either of the uh, first uh, after the white space clearance uh, after that we have read the character we check if that's already the end of file or if we return from our comment with the end of file character if that one is now our end of file because if that's the case then we return end of file if no condition we just wrote fulfill are fulfilled then it is for example operator or a misleading or some random character that shouldn't be there basically a syntax error and with that uh, our uh, tokenizer will just return this character but it needs to convert it first to an integer it will then update the last character so that we have actually read that and then we return this newly uh, this to integer converted character and with that we now created our first small little lexer that is uh, that will be very useful for the later parsing step of our syntax that's the first chapter of the small tutorial where we write our own custom lexer and next time we hopefully reach the point where we write our parser and actually can run some small code. Please let me know in the comments down below what you think about this tutorial format and what you would think of a blog-like format where we talk about smaller and bigger projects where we could discover in depth what a given topic is actually all about. So. I was Panacotta no no from Coder D from Mesopots and they say baba until next time and as always keep coding!